how do you like your gyros? I like mine mixed with pork, beef, lamb, extra tzatziki sauce, a glass of that ouzo, chilling in the Mykonos beach with a cup of bass. Woo! Here's everything you need to know about the gyro instruments in your plane. Let go! Oh, we are back off in that thing. We are back off in that thing. With the gyro instruments, you have three gyro instruments that you need to be worried about on your aircraft. Think about that six pack we talked about, how you can break that six pack into, you got three Heinekens and three Coronas. Them three Coronas we talked about in the last video, you can check that video out. There'll be a link at the end of this video where them links be at, and you can check that out. I was talking about the pedo static system. So that's that three Coronas. Now you got three Heinekens you need to worry about, and those three Heinekens are in relation to your gyro instruments. So always break that six pack of instruments into groups. It helps you easily remember them, and they all have dedicated things that they do for you. And here now we're gonna talk about the gyro instruments, what a gyro is, and all that good stuff. Hey, let go! Boom! Those three Heinekens you need to worry about, those three instruments that are at play with the gyro instruments, they are, of course, the attitude indicator, the heading indicator, and the turn coordinator. And the way this system works, it works over two different sources. One is air, and the other is electricity. So you need to be worried about how it's being powered, and we're gonna talk about that in great detail right now. Boom! Turn off the lights, a and light a candle. We back off in this thing with the gyro on our side. Extra tzatziki sauce on that thing. You probably seen this device on someone's desk. If you ever been inside of an office building and look at someone's desk who thinking they're all cool and everything, they probably have something that looks like this. It stands on their desk like this, and it's basically just a heavily weighted disc that spins on its own there and keeps hold while holding its position. Like this disc just spins around and around. And you're thinking to yourself, that's a nice little fancy toy. That little fancy toy is a gyro instrument and it's giving you an exact play by play of how a gyro works. It's gonna spin in place just like that. Very similar to this also too, if you were a kid or if you have kids right now, you're thinking they may have like a spinning top something where they pump it and after they pump it and they just let it go and it kind of spins on its own on the ground. Very simple toy, hours of entertainment with that thing. That of course is a gyro instrument as well. And these gyro type of instruments, they work off of just two basic things, rigidity in space and precision. Boom, rigidity in space just simply means that this device can remain in a fixed position while spinning. So just think about being something being rigid. If something's rigid, that means that it's fixed. It's kind of like in that nice fixed position while it's spinning. So while this disc is spinning all around, if you were to just lift this up and turn it upside down and around and do all kinds of fun things, it will just maintain that position and keep right on spinning. And that's exactly what a gyro does. Rigidity in space. And precession is simply just the tilting or turning of the gyro when force is applied. The unique thing about a gyro is if you apply force to one side of a gyro, it's not going to happen and immediately tilt in the direction that you think it's going to tilt. It's going to tilt like 90 degrees ahead at an angle as it's spinning and continuing to go around. That's the unique thing about a gyro. And what that means to you and what that does to you is the fact that that keeps the instruments kind of being off tilted sometimes and causing errors. But anytime it can cause an error, it can always be adjusted and corrected. Think about your heading indicator and how you can easily once it gets off kilter put it right back on by using your compass as a reference and a variety of other tools as well particularly your attitude indicator which is a gyro instrument if you were to pitch up past the 30 degree point or you were to bank past that 60 degree point you can cause it to cause an error and tumble around until it finds itself that's part of the procession that's at play with those gyro instruments Lego boom! We back off in our cockpit with our gyro instruments, baby. Hey, one time we got our attitude indicator, our heading indicator, and our turn coordinator swinging and banging that thing. Also got a little illustration of what a gyro looks like behind that attitude indicator and the heading indicator, that gyro that's positioned behind there. They're working and doing their things. And we know that gyros can be powered by either two sources, one being air or the other being electricity. And there's actually a really cool built-in safety feature in your aircraft, and this is kind of how it works. The two that's powered of your two gyro instruments that's powered by air are your attitude indicator and your headache indicator. 
They're powered by the vacuum pump. Think about the vacuum pump. You probably check it all the time when you're doing your run-up. You're ramping up those RPMs. You're making sure that baby's in the green. Just think about that engine vacuum pump that's sucking air around those gyros. It's that suction that's going on. It's spinning, baby. It's spinning. It's spinning. It's spinning. It's doing their thing. They spinning. They spinning, baby. And when they spin it, that's keeping that attitude indicator and that heading indicator giving you those proper readings and things that you're doing. But then on the other flip side of that, you have the turn coordinator. It's not powered by the vacuum pump in the air source. It's powered by electricity. So now that's a really cool safety feature because you think about what does the attitude indicator and the torn coordinator do? Kind of similar things in terms of helping you gauge the amount of bank that you're putting into the aircraft and your turning abilities and all that good things. But let's just say you have an electrical problem and your turn coordinator goes out you still have your attitude indicator to give you a read on what you're doing in the aircraft. So that's a nice safety feature and that's why these gyro instruments are set up in this way. So if one source goes out for any particular reason, you don't just lose everything. That's really cool and that's what aviation is all about, baby. Hey, one time, let go, boom! One of the first gyro instruments we have in our cockpit here, of course, is the attitude indicator. And you know what the attitude indicator is all about, helping you gauge that pitch front back helping you gauge that roll side to side like you hitting the switches in the sixth tray coming down you know what I'm talking about one time so you know what that attitude indicator is doing and then looking behind that if you were to peel back that that cover or that that you would see that gyro in there and that gyro is placed in the vertical axis on the position and it's spinning around giving you that reading it's kind of staying stationary to the horizon that's why the attitude indicator kind of creates a false horizon which can be very necessary in low vis kind of areas to know whether or not you're pitched right or know whether or not you're rolling. So it's a great device to use. The one thing you must be aware of is that once you exceed a certain pitch level, usually about 30 degrees, and once you exceed about 60 degrees of bank, it can create errors in this attitude indicator. This is why I'm not a fan of using the attitude indicator as the first instrument your eyes go to, particularly if you have or experience spatial disorientation. If you're trying to find yourself and you go into this instrument, let's just say you exceeded 60 degrees of bank because you're all out of place, then this can be tumbling around and you can be chasing nothing that's not even there. And that's not good. That's why I always favor airspeed first until you find yourself and let your instruments find themselves, particularly these gyro instruments, now that you see how they work and understand that they need to find themselves as they're spinning around in there. That's why it's always good to know how these things work, not just to pass your test or to do the things you have to do for your check ride or your knowledge test, but if you understand how this kind of information and knowledge can help you stay alive and understanding how these devices work. You gotta be a part-time mechanic, part-time lawyer, and a full-time pilot, baby. Hey, one time. Boom! Next up is the heading indicator, baby. And the unique thing about the heading indicator, inside the aircraft that you're flying, you have a magnetic compass. And you ever ask yourself, why do you even need a heading indicator? Why don't you just fly off the compass? The compass is, is always telling you exactly where you're going, right? And you always have to adjust this thing because it's always throwing it, itself off every 10 to 15 minutes. So why not just fly off the compass? The next time you're in your aircraft, pick a heading and get on your compass and then just look at your compass and then try to make a degree turn, say 10, 20 degrees to your left and watch what your compass does. It actually goes in the opposite direction that you're turning. If you're turning 10 to 20 degrees to the left, the compass is going to indicate that you're turning to the right. And the reason why it does that is because that compass is on the outside of the aircraft. But what the heading indicator does, working with the gyro, is it puts it on the inside of the aircraft, this device, and kind of puts things in coordination and helping you kind of coordinate alongside the aircraft. So instead of being on the outside, it's on the inside due to this device. And that's why you fly off the heading indicator. And that's why you got to keep adjusting it because it has that precision at play there and it gets off and you got to keep turning this little knob to kind of get it back, checking it with the compass that's happening at the top. Boom! In addition, your compass is subject to a bunch of errors. Dip errors, turn errors, acceleration errors. It's full of errors. So fly off that heading indicator, but make sure you're matching the heading indicator to match what it goes on on the compass every 10 to 15 minutes to make sure you're running that thing. Boom! Always remember that your heading indicator and your attitude indicator are both operating off the engine vacuum pump. And that engine vacuum pump is sucking that air, making that gyro spin around, giving it that accurate reading. It's the most effective and efficient when you got them RPMs pushed in, baby. But when you're idle on the engine, 
it's not as effective and you can cause that drift to happen and that's why you got to keep resetting things. You may have experienced this and this kind of explains why. For example, you may set your heading indicator in the very beginning before you even begin the taxi and you just taxiing down the taxiway and then get to the runway, do your run up and then you look at your heading indicator and it's way off. How did that little short taxi that you did from wherever you were parked to the runway, how did it get off like that? That whole time that things were idle. That when you had the engine down real low and you were parking, you were trying to find yourself, get situated before you take off, the vacuum pump wasn't working at, the, at its top performance and that was causing it to drift. That's causing that heading indicator to drift off kilter. So that's what you gotta be aware of. But when that engine is ramming, that's why when you do that run up and you got that engine in, you're looking at that green thing on that vacuum, baby. Yo, we in the green, baby, foliage. And you make it show everything is good because that's when it's the most effective. A. A. Your gyro on your turn coordinator is monitored at an angle so it can remain upright in any kind of turn. And you also have a nice little indicator right in the center. If you ever see a red flag there, you know something isn't right and it's not responding and it's not functioning properly. That's your indicator that you're looking for. Make sure no red flags, baby. All is good. One time. Boom! The party's back lit up, baby. Gyros for everybody that Uzo. Get yeah, size. We in that thing. You know what I'm talking about? In the Mickey Nose with a couple badass. And don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free, fun videos to learn everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Or if you're already a pilot, just fun videos for you to stay proficient. Love you one time. Why won't you swing it and bang it? That thing, baby. I want you to feel what we all feel. One time. Love you one time.